Hello friends and welcome to my channel for another customization video. Today we're going to learn how to make a relatively simple DIY action figure diorama that doesn't require a lot of artistic ability. So let's get right to it. All right, now going over supplies. Now I'll have links to all of this in the description below. Most of the stuff I will have gotten on Amazon. Now typically when you make a diorama, diorama builders, we use this stuff, right? This is pink insulation foam. You know, you can cut it with a hot wire, you can cut it with a knife, like a sharp utility knife. You can carve brick into it, you can carve sidewalk lines into it. You can cut it with the hot wire into thinner strips and layer it. So this is a very versatile material, but you have to know how to use it. You have to, the right stuff to cut it with. You gotta know how to paint. As mentioned, I wanna talk about how we can make a diorama with simpler materials. It is more so like anyone can do it, whether you can paint or not. So I've made brick like this before out of this foam and it looks amazing right but you have to literally carve every single line into it paint it with four or five layers to get it to look like this i don't always have time for that and a lot of people you know who watch these kind of videos don't know how to do that so i want to show you a way that we can make dioramas without having to know how to do all that stuff so these are dollhouse wallpaper eight and a half by 11 inch sheets they come in a three pack i think they're like 10 12 bucks I got two three packs of them so that I'd have plenty to work with. You will need something to affix them to, right? Something to make the walls out of. Typically you would use this stuff and you know, you can glue magnets to it, magnetize it so that the dioramas are more, you know, compartmentalized. You can collapse them and take them apart and stuff. Because this is gonna go in a fixed spot on my shelf, I'm not gonna worry about magnetizing stuff. I'm gonna make a base for it that is just pretty permanent. Let's talk about some of the stuff you might affix this to. You can use regular, project foam board you know you can get this at the grocery store you can get this at michael's crafts at hobby lobby you know it's just basically foam with paper adhered to it we all use this stuff in school probably so you know it's not poster board it's like a foam board so this can be a really good base for your you know your floor and your walls and stuff if you want something lighter weight it's not going to be holding a lot of stuff onto it for adding some visual interest to the brick so it's not just straight up brick uh, I want to do like a roll up door. I bought a bunch of this paper a long time ago, and this makes a perfect roll up door when you paint it. Now, I already had this. If you don't want to go buy a whole pack of it, a lot of times cardboard can be peeled apart to reveal it. In fact, this is the cardboard that came as the, you know, thing to keep this stuff flat, right? And you can see right here, if you peel off just this top layer, you reveal that same kind of corrugated cardboard pattern, right? So. Pretty much all cardboard comes like this uh, if it's a box or whatever. So look around because you might be able to just peel that off. And you know, if you buy some of this stuff, you basically already have the supply. For me, one of the most tedious parts of making a diorama is painting concrete. You, know, you basically have to paint it black first and then kind of dry brush it with like a gray to try to get like a concrete texture to it. Uh, you know, dry brushing allows you to kind of just like hit the highest points of the foam with the gray color. And that is what gives you that like kind of textured look. That takes forever. It's really hard to do. Even for somebody like me who's been painting most of my life, like it's just hard to do it without getting a ton of brush strokes on it and making it look even. So an alternative to that would be this stuff, right? This is a, a vinyl uh, adhesive film. This is for like redoing a countertop. Uh, or, you know, some people do it on floors. It's basically, it's like linoleum. My wife bought this for a project and I mean, it's a, it looks like concrete. This is gonna be perfect for the ground and I don't have to paint it, I don't have to texture it. I'll literally just cut the piece I need, adhere it to the base, whether it's a piece of wood or this foam core stuff. I mean, we'll be in business. So really excited about that. This is something you can get on Amazon for like $10 um, and they give you a ton of it. Another supply you can use for the base or the, the wall is this kind of stuff, right? You know these like yard signs? This is this like corrugated plastic. You see these with like campaign signs, like vote yes on measure or whatever, right? Uh, this is one that a company that we used left in our, our lawn, right? They put it up to like advertise their business. And I was like, well, my yard is not your billboard. So I took it out, but I kept it. Cause I'm like, this is a good sizable piece of this stuff and uh, I can use it for something. So this may end up being the wall piece or the, the floor, I'm not sure yet, but either way, um, you know, this is like a free thing that is like upcycling that would normally just be trash otherwise. And for another fun piece of detailing, we've got these little dumpsters. 
I got these for I think 35 bucks for the pair on Amazon. They're listed as like dumpsters for wrestling figures. Uh, but they're, you know, they're perfect for like a 112 scale diorama. Obviously they need some weathering, right? So we're gonna wanna paint this thing up and make it look nasty and put some graffiti on it and that sort of thing. But they're a great base and they come in a few different variations. So you can get like, you know, they have obviously green and blue. You can get a black one. You get a combination that's like the dumpster plus a couple little trash cans. So there are a few variations and, you know, they cap out at around 35, 40 bucks. So, you know, not too bad, especially for what you get. Uh, you know, these open, you can put stuff in them. So they're a really great, just kind of set decoration piece to give your diorama a little bit of visual interest, a little bit of realism. So another fun thing I want to incorporate is this fire escape shelf. You may have seen these, like if you follow, you know, action figure photographers or anything on Instagram or just people who collect and make customs and stuff, uh, you may have seen these. It's, it's a set of wall shelves that you screw onto the wall and it looks like a little fire escape. Now it's not completely like scale accurate, right? Like usually fire escapes have kind of a graded pattern instead of, you know, like a solid piece of metal. And usually these like rungs are closer together. So, but I mean, for like a piece of set dressing on the diorama piece, like this is pretty cool. And it gives you another level that you could put some characters on. So I'm gonna be using wood or some combination of wood and, and uh, some of these other supplies to make this diorama just so that I can have this like sturdily uh, stuck to the wall. And then it comes with these little ladder pieces too. So, you know, so there are three of these total in here plus the ladders to connect them. So overall, you know, I think this was like $38, you know, not totally necessary in a, in a diorama, but it's a cool thing to have. And say I use one or two of these in the diorama, then I still have a few that I can use as like a shelf piece or whatever. So again, I'll have a link to this in the description as well. Now there are some other bits of things that I have around my studio that I'm going to be using um, and just, you know, random little household odds and ends that, that make decorative sort of alleyway detail stuff. Uh, and we'll go over those as we go. That's all stuff that you won't have to buy. Like you'll probably just have it laying around your house because I think most of us do have that kind of stuff. So uh, especially if you're a weirdo like me and you save all of it <laughs> because one day you'll make a diorama like this. So yeah, we'll get into that as we go. Now this diorama on my shelf is gonna go here. So I have kind of limited space as you can see, and I mostly just want it to be kind of a setting backdrop for these turtles in this van. Now, if you're unfamiliar with my channel, I just made this. This is a custom uh, turtle van. It's like got a full interior and everything. And I made these custom turtles on the channel as well. So you can go back and, and check out and see how I did that. But yeah, as you can see, I've got, you know, settings and backdrops for pretty much everything on my shelf except for a couple and this is one of the few that's left so i'm not going to be able to incorporate obviously the dumpster and that stuff but i will you know there's some room here so i, I would like to use the fire escape up top just to kind of take up some of that negative space up there uh, and i'll probably put a little roll-up door underneath it uh, maybe a trash can next to it maybe a little light fixture or something so i want stuff that you can see but isn't going to be like a major priority so when you're doing this kind of thing it's a good idea to have Kind of a just an idea of where you're going right so i just took some scrap paper and did a little sketch i've got 18 inches wide 15 inches deep and 15 inches high to work with in that shelf space so within that i just kind of drew where i want to put stuff fire escape will go here the bottom of that will be at about 10 inches and then i'm going to have my door here you know in scale that's probably about seven and a half inches i'll probably put a little light fixture there a little trash can or something yeah, just, just know where you're going before you start cutting because it's going to save you a lot of trouble later on. Okay, so I have my base ready to go. So this piece of wood that I had, I bought this pack for various applications. It's just like thin uh, birch plywood and it's an eighth of an inch thick. And I, I used one of those. It happens to be 18 inches wide, which is the exact width of my shelf space. And then this sign happens to be 18 inches by, I think, 24. I took three inches off of the sign and I put it on here just because this is only 12 inches, right? And I needed 15. So that bridges that for me. And then I just taped it uh, and it, it fits on because of the corrugated like nature of it. You can see there's holes in it. So I just slid it on through one of these little uh, gaps and then taped it on both sides. And that does all I need. I just need it to be able to adhere some of this brick paper too. 
And then I took this piece of scrap wood that I had and screwed this board onto it uh, to make it more stable. And then I'm gonna screw the sign through that piece as well so that it's one piece. But I need to do the concrete on this first. But I'm really stoked on this because like, what a great way to use this like garbage sign that I have, right? It's not gonna serve any purpose, but uh, it does now. So it, instead of, I'm saving it from the landfill basically and giving it a new life as a diorama base. It sits on there pretty comfortably like that. I am gonna have to screw this to this piece though so that when I mount the fire escape on there, it's not gonna fall over. All right, status update here. Please excuse any shakiness of the camera. My stand broke, so uh, I have to wait till tomorrow to get a new one. And time is of the essence here, so I'm soldiering on. <laughs> uh, so as you can see, I've got this on and it looks really good. Uh, this stuff has a really strong sticky side to it. So, you know, resituating it is pretty difficult. Uh, and I ran into a little bit of trouble with that. And you know, it doesn't need to be perfect because it's concrete and concrete is not perfect. So I think it looks really good. The brick was challenging because these pieces are not uniform. Uh, you can see where one is here. A lot of this is gonna be covered anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. I made some pilot holes for the fire escape so that I know where that will screw in. So that's gonna go on there like that. So right away, you're distracted away from some of the misaligned bricks, you know, cause you're looking at this thing. And then down here is where the door is gonna go. And I purposefully made the seam along here so that the door would cover it. So that's also gonna help. And then there's another seam right here and that's gonna be covered by some piping. And we'll get into that in a little bit here. The other thing I did is I took some strips of balsa wood. This is just really cheap, soft wood you get at the craft store. You know, like a two to three foot piece of it at Michael's Crafts is like 79 cents or something. So I took a piece and I wrapped it in some of the excess of the concrete stuff. And then I just hot glued it to the base and I left a gap for the door. So that just helps to give it a bit more of a realistic look where it meets the ground there. And just to show you, I've got a little trash can there. Yeah, and I mean, you know, already you just put one thing there and it kind of gives it a little more life. All right, working on the roll-up door. And so I've painted it black first. So this is that green paper from the beginning. Uh, and then I've just taken some gray acrylic paint, this kind of stuff, super cheap, you know, it's a dollar or less at Michael's Crafts or Hobby Lobby. And uh, I'm just, I'm not getting a ton on my brush. So I just wanted to kind of show what this can look like. You know, you just kind of lightly, this is called dry brushing. When you take a pretty dry brush and you just sort of hit the raised parts with it. So you see how it's leaving the depth. It's black in the, in the cracks there and then lighter at the ridges. That helps give it a more of a three dimensional look. So I'm gonna do a bunch of that and then I'm gonna do some heavier spots to make it look like it was, you know, there was graffiti that was painted over or something. So working on a little more detailing and weathering and I'm just taking various mixtures of like gray paint with a little bit of that brick red and I'm just kind of streaking across like this. That's gonna make it look like there was graffiti here that got painted over. Now you'll notice it's bubbling a little bit. That's not a big deal because as soon as the paint dries, you can just push it back down and it'll re-adhere re to the surface. You know, the more you do that kind of stuff, the more it's gonna look realistic and, and lived in. So I've made this little power box and these cables here. Now all these are are some straws. I save straws and reuse them a lot. These thicker ones, I think this is probably from Burger King because I love me a uh, Impossible Whopper. I just spray painted these gray with a gray primer. And then the cables are made of this kind of bendy action figure wire. This came in some old NECA figures that I had and I saved this stuff to make like wired capes out of or... And then I have a staple gun, so I just stapled a couple of those here to kind of hold them in place and look like they're riveted in. And then this stuff is just hot glued to the wall here. This bit, I don't know what this was. I think it was like, sometimes when you buy an electronic and there's like a little plastic cover on the prongs on the plug, I think that might've been what this was. Um, so I saved it because I always save little stuff like that. So the straws, two of them just fit right in there perfectly. I glued them in, spray painted everything. And then over here, this is the, the housing for the roll-up door. This is just a piece of that pink insulation foam. I had an off cut and so I just sanded it to be kind of rounded off, you know, like a, how these things look, you know, flat and then like two angles on the top and bottom. And then that's just gonna get glued right there above the door. And then usually this kind of door is recessed into the brick and, and because this I'm not cutting out the door like I would if it were foam. I just took a couple strips of this balsa wood 
and cut them to size and then I wrapped it in some of the extra brick paper. And then a few more little details and we'll be pretty close to done. All right, updating with a bit more detail here. So more touch up paint. And then I add some graffiti, just kind of random stuff, you know, little personal things that uh, mean something to me or what have you. I'm not the best graffiti writer. I'm super out of practice. I used to do it a lot as a teenager. I was really into hip hop. I mean, I still am, but you know, I was a break dancer. And, and so, uh, yeah, I tried to kind of bring a little bit of that to this. And then a little more detailing also, I put some fake bird poop on the fire escape. <laughs> I just took some, you know, lighter colored paint and just kind of put it on there with a paintbrush. Uh, Cause you know, these things would just be covered in pigeon droppings. And yeah, it's really starting to come together. So next up, I'm gonna go online and find some like signage, like no parking sign for right here somewhere. One other detail. So you can get these little lamps. I got this on Amazon. It came from China and it took forever. I've seen that people can find these on, at the dollar store sometimes. I've never been able to find one. I believe this is technically like a one six scale lamp for like dollhouse stuff or something. So I took one, took the lamp piece off of it, and then I painted it in this like industrial gray color. And I'm gonna drill a little bit of a hole and then hot glue this so that it goes right in about there like that. The thing about these is that you just, it's all contained in this piece. So you press it, little LED turns on. So that'll just be a nice little detail. One of the final stages we wanna do is just dirty this thing up, right? So I've taken, black and brown acrylic paint and watered it down. And I'm just taking this brush and I'm just flicking it and I'm making these little kind of washes and just taking the brush and doing this with it. You just want it to look like nasty, you know, cause it's too clean otherwise. Get it in the cracks. But yeah, you just want everything to look just kind of dingy. And the contrast is higher on camera here, but to the naked eye, it's a lot more subtle. So yeah, just taking the brush and just kind of giving everything a general like dirtiness to it. Cause what happens is when you step back and look at it, like it just looks more believable. If it were just all this like pristine looking brick, it would not look great. I also just kind of like stuck my finger in, like I'll make a kind of little wash like this, stick my finger in it and then just rub it around. And this stuff isn't absorbent. So it doesn't get too heavy too quickly. And you can just kind of push it around and it, it'll it eventually settle kind of looking a lot more natural. So yeah, that is definitely going to take this kind of thing up to the next level. I also did the same thing with the dumpster. And you can see just that little bit did a lot to it. You put something like that, like that, and boom. I mean, you got a nice dingy looking alley. Here is the finished result and I'm really pleased with it. You know, as I mentioned, like it's really really time consuming to do these like out of foam. And while I think the result tends to look better, you know, you have more control over how dark the brick is and, and the colors and all that stuff. I think this is a really great result for the amount of time that it took. And furthermore, you know, it goes to show that you don't have to know how to paint the subtleties of a brick to make something like this on your own if you're not somebody who's adept at painting. Now I did this with all of the supplies that I showed you at the outset. One other little thing that I used that was not in the supply section at the beginning, this palette. So this is actually a coaster. I got these on Amazon as well. They came, they came in like a five or six pack, I think. I will put a link in the description for this as well. They come pristine, right? So I just, I weathered it with some watered down black and brown paints and I painted blue on the ends because a lot of these palettes will have like spray paint on the end. Now I could have made this out of balsa wood, but uh, I didn't want to. <laughs> it's, you know, sometimes you gotta go, is it worth my time to sit down and do every little painstaking aspect of this? Or can I find a five pack of them online for $10? Or uh, that little light really adds a lot. I mean, when it's off, you know, it looks more like daytime. When it's on, it gives it a nighttime vibe. Um, and then also the no parking sign. So again, I just printed that up. I used some silver tape that I have. You can't see it on camera, but there's kind of a shine to it. It makes it look like the sign is printed on metal. You know, it's really cool because when you look at something like this here, you can't really see what else is around it that much. I mean, it just looks like a real place. So that's the kind of realism you can get with just some stick on paper and some linoleum and some paint. It's pretty cool. And on the door here, I dented a bunch of it. And I think that really helps to kind of give it some realism as well, especially down here. I made it look like somebody kicked it maybe. Firescape is the only thing that's not quite super realistic, but again, 
this would have taken me an entire day to build an accurate looking one and trying to find the material for like the graded floor that these have to look accurate would have just been a real pain. As it stands, it's gonna look about like this in my display. So this is perfect for what I need. Yeah, and I, you know, again, these are just Burger King straws and some action figure ties with some staples. I just painted them gray, a little weathering on them, a little bit of graffiti on that as well. Now, another little thing you can do to kind of liven this sort of thing up is little props. You know, a lot of action figures come with stuff that we don't use. You've got these little beer bottles here. I think they were from with like a NECA preacher figure. Uh, this was from some kind of diamond select thing. It was a little coffee cup holder and then like an energy drink. So, you know, you just drop some trash around and it just kind of sells the realism of the scale of everything because you've got these little everyday items that we recognize. You know, I put a little piece of a, a plastic bag coming out of the trash can that kind of looks like it's overflowing with trash a little bit. So you can find these little bits of stuff everywhere. Some people will, will use like little crushed up, you know, tea leaves from a bag of Lipton or something and kind of sprinkle it around to just make it look like debris. Some people will make little, you know, moss collected in the base of the buildings and stuff. So there's a lot you can do to kind of sell the realism of these things. A lot of the stuff we often already have, like these action figure accessories and stuff like that. So, you know, look around your junk drawer in your kitchen, new packaging from stuff, see if there's anything you can use. All right, now let's put this thing on the shelf where it belongs with the turtles in the van and see how it looks. All right, first here they are in kind of a nighttime setting just cause I wanted to see how it looks. And it's pretty cool with that light on. A little more peripheral light and it looks pretty rad still. Yeah, there's full blown light in the display and pretty stoked on that. As I mentioned, you know, the van covers a lot of it, but we can get in there and still see some of the detail. You know, if you're looking around the display, kind of checking out the different aspects of it. And then I have this McFarlane Matrix diorama piece that I sort of co-opted to kind of just add another little element. You know, I like when characters in my display are at different heights, it just kind of gives some dynamism to the whole thing. So I'm really pleased with how this turned out. And again, you know, it wasn't super difficult to make. You don't have to have a lot of artistic ability to do this kind of thing. And again, aside from like the kind of graffiti touch up sort of paint, there's nothing really uniform about the way I painted this. It's all just kind of like splotching, you know, spraying and splattering dirt and grime around. Yeah, so there we have it. That's the finished result. And I hope that this was something that everybody watched and felt like, hey, you know what, I could do that. Like maybe I don't paint and I've never made a diorama before, but I can get those supplies pretty easily and put that together or something like it. You know, it doesn't have to be exactly like this either. I mean, you could take what I did and kind of, you know, make it your own. Maybe you want a, a different kind of brick. You know, there's some different options on Amazon for this kind of paper. Maybe you want a different color concrete. Maybe you want to try to do a building that isn't brick and use the concrete wrap stuff to make the side of a building look a little different. So see what you find, see what you like, you know, play with it. But again, the idea is just to make it look as realistic as possible by adding a little bit of detail and you know, just some recognizable elements to it. The end result is you have a cool looking shelf display. So that is gonna do it for this video. I wanna thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, I invite you to click the like button and hit subscribe and join me as I make cool stuff. I, you know, custom figures, dioramas, vehicles to go with the figures. I review new stuff that I get on the channel. If you're looking for other ways to support this, I've got t-shirts available. My head on swivel shirt, as well as several other action figure and comic book themed shirts are available in my Redbubble shop. If you've never used Redbubble, it's pretty great. You pick the color shirt, the style, and the design you want, and they ship it right to you. Now, if you're not a t-shirt person, but you like comics, I've got several comics and graphic novels available namely my books High Crimes, Count, and Retroactive. High Crimes is kind of Breaking Bad meets Cliffhanger. Retroactive is like James Bond meets Groundhog Day, and Count is my sci-fi reimagining of the Count of Monte Cristo. Think kind of a, you know, John Wick meets Zorro. It's a cool story with swashbuckling action and sword fights and vehicle chases, and it's about redemption, revenge, and revolution. So those are all available at your local comic shop, bookstore, or at the links in the description below. So to everyone who's picked up a shirt already or one of my books, thank you so much. Like that means the absolute world to me. And I, I really, really appreciate it. it. It really helps make it so that I can do this kind of stuff and bring you more videos. 
Couldn't ask for anything more. So thank you. So that is going to do it for this one. Until next time, keep your head on swivel.